Okay. So we hope to do have that back to you in June. We do that all together. That's what we're going to Okay. Are there other questions? Other discussions? All right. Call for the question. All in favor, let it be known by approving the motion of the spending of $15,000 to pave the track. All in favor, let it know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That takes us to new business item number eight, request from Boy Scouts for permission to construct Carlisle High School Memorial Garden on county property. Mr. Kelly is... Is there a merit badge for sitting through a public meeting? No, that's what I thought. He didn't complain. Yeah. And he doesn't want any money, he just wants to do it. Good evening, Chairman and Board of Supervisors members. My Good name evening. is Andrew Buck. I'm a Life Scout Troop and Troop, Boy Scout Troop 173. I am here today to ask for permission for the location for my Eagle Scout project. For my project, I would like to do a memorial garden at, that, at Carolina High School. My proposed location is between the entrance to the bus parking lot off of Devil's Three Jump Road and behind Carolina High School tennis courts. To the right behind the water tower and before going down the hill to the soccer field. There are a few reasons why I would like to do this. The first would be to honor the people we have sadly lost while attending Caroline High School, both students and staff. October 2013, I lost a very close friend. I wanted to do everything I could to remember her, bracelets, t-shirts, CDs, etc. However, I was not able nor allowed to do anything. I remembered I had an Eagle Scout project coming up. As the year went by, we had another passing than another. It seemed like the school and the community could not go through one grading period without someone passing away. I also could not do anything for them either. I was motivated to do something for them. So with each passing, it made me more determined to make this concept Memorial Garden my Eagle Scout project in honor of their lives. This seemed to be the perfect opportunity to do so. The Memorial Garden will give families and friends of the deceased a serene location to relax and reflect on the memories of their loved ones with room for people to be added who have already died and who may die in the future. As you can see over here on my diagram, these trees out here on the outside are the dogwood trees. They will be placed 11 feet outside of the walkway and the benches. These will be benches out here and out here. This will be an area for plaques for stones so that people can get their loved ones names and grab them. This will be a six foot walkway going all the way around. And this will be a weeping willow tree. Here in the middle will be a weeping willow tree. I chose all these materials for specific reasons. The weeping willow tree, as it grows, it grows and it falls over like it's weeping towards the loved ones as it's crying. The dogwood tree symbolizes hope and love. Up here you can see I have a little garden. These will be Laroca plants. They symbolize freedom. Thank you for your consideration about my new location for this project. This concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Andrew, I would just like to say as Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, uh, I would first like to say thank you uh, for, for being here and, and thank you for your presentation. Um, occasionally, something happens that everybody agrees on. And I know I don't speak for the entire board, but I believe that this is one of those times. Um, again, congratulations to you. Thank you. And um, I would ask if other board members want to comment. I have a question. Mr. Thomas. If I may. Mr. Uh, Thomas. I, I met Mr. Buck and his, and his mother at a restaurant a couple of months ago, and he told me about this project, and it was a great idea. The one thing I didn't ask you then is, that's on school board property, isn't it? No, it is not. We have changed locations, and I have met with Mr. Schiebel, and it is on county property. Because we have the right of way probably from the tower. Yes, sir. 
That's all I needed to know. Yep. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let us know when you want to start. As soon as possible. Any other questions, <laughs> concerns? If not, I, we probably need a, a motion to allow Mr. Buck to do this. He's actually in the Port Royal District, so if you would like to make the motion, I'll second it. I would like to do that. As a matter of fact, Mr. Buck brought this to my house, and we sat down and we looked at it, and I was very impressed, and I'm impressed again tonight. Thank so you. So having said that, I will move that we give uh, Andrew Buck the permission to do his memorial garden in the area where he has requested. Second. Okay. You want to carry that? A second. Oh, sure. oh. Yeah. Um, hearing a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. Congratulations, Mr. Buck. Thank we you. We look forward to the fruition of your project. Thank you. Again, thank you again. I, I do have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Buck. Yeah, uh, uh, great job. Uh, you really, really did. But my question is, after it is built, uh, are you going to maintain it as far as uh, the appearance and, and what takes place? Or will the county maintain it? I'm sorry? We didn't offer to maintain it. He was going to get clubs and other groups Okay, to so you're going to have someone to maintain it in the long term? Yes, sir. Ah, okay, great, great, great. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, that takes us to agenda item number nine, proposed adoption of emergency ordinance 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 prohibiting the keeping of wild and exotic animals. Can we take a five minute break? Okay, we, we need a we need a five minute break. Uh, we some of us are a little older now and you know we have to Okay we will reconvene the uh, twenty fifteen uh, May twelfth Board of Supervisors meeting. Again that takes us to agenda item number nine proposed Adoption of emergency ordinance prohibiting the keeping of wild or exotic animals. There was a, a lady who had wanted to speak during public comment. If you want to come at this time and give us some information uh, concerning this, and then I will ask whoever else needs to speak, or, or the board will again address it at that time. Okay. Hi, I'm Mary Feinberg, and I maintain a USDA license and a Virginia exhibitor's permit to exhibit wild animals in Virginia. And after meeting with um, officials from Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries yesterday, <coughs> I became aware of a meeting tonight to propose an emergency exotic animal ordinance. Um, that appears to be the result of numerous rumors and defamatory allegations about my exotic animal ownership. And I believe it would be a terrible mistake to enact emergency legislation based on information that has snowballed throughout our community. And I was hoping you'd give me the chance to introduce myself and give you the facts. The animals currently listed on my Virginia exhibitor's permit are a cougar, a spider monkey, and a weeping capuchin monkey. Recently, I obtained an exotic importation and or holding um, Virginia Department um, of Game and Inland Fisheries permit to add the following additional animals to my nonprofit 501c3 organization's exhibits. Um, I wanted to import two cougars, two Eurasian lynx cats, one Jeffrey's cat, and one tiger. I have a nonprofit organization, Peace Fam, which stands for People, Earth, Animals, Conservation, and Education Family. I started this organization in January of 2013 when I was a Florida resident. However, I soon moved back to Virginia because of family reasons, and all my families in Virginia. My Peace Fam organization's record can be independently verified by going to www.sunbiz.org and clicking on search our records. Um, Peace Fam is a nonprofit corporation operated exclusively for educational and charitable purposes to bring people together to enhance appreciation of each other, of wildlife conservation, and the Earth's natural resources. Peace Fam seeks to promote peace, healing, conservation, and preservation of our planet through education about animal conservation and environmental issues, as well as outreach programs. 
One of the most effective educational tools is maintaining an exotic animal exhibit for students, the elderly, and the general public. Exhibited animals are ambas ambassadors of peace and education, and they have a proven ability to effectively bring people of all ages, cultures, and backgrounds together. Because I have to work full time, I'm only able to devote my time to peace fam around my full time job and my long daily commute, which is about three to four hours a day. I work in Springfield, Virginia. And therefore, trying to grow peace fam has been a lengthy process. We recently obtained our nonprofit status, which means we can now um, begin accepting donations, and I'm hopeful that PeaceFam will grow. And I believe that on a grassroots level, PeaceFam can grow to be a beautiful organization to make our world a better place. And my goal is to add a few more limited exhibits to our animal collection, as well as add experienced professional partners to PeaceFam's management team to help the organization grow and flourish. Originally, I planned to move back to Florida when I started, where I started PeaceFam, and I had put my home on the real estate market. I think this is where some of the rumors and, and all have come into play. Um, but some unexpected health problems occurred, and I'm faced with medical bills and the need to maintain my health insurance offered at my job. With the realization that I must remain at my job in Virginia, I asked my realtor to remove my home from the market listings. And then I was presented with this opportunity to obtain these six additional felids that I listed on my import permit, as well as to have the experienced caretakers of these cats move from Florida to my property in Virginia to help me care for these animals and become part of Peace Fam's management team. The caretakers of these cats have raised these animals since they were very young, and they are bonded with these animals, and they are professional, experienced zookeepers with decades of experience, and it seemed like a wonderful opportunity for Peace Fam. My hope is eventually to purchase another property in Florida and open a second Peace Fam site there. However, that is a very long-term goal. Um, I have to remain in Virginia because of my job, and in the meantime, we're laying the groundwork for our second Peace Fam site by negotiations with another nonprofit organization in Florida to exhibit one of our cougars at that facility. And understanding the lengthy process involved, a second Peace Fam facility in Florida is a very long term goal I'm looking at down the road. In the meantime, my hope is to fully develop my Virginia property with these additional exhibits. So students in the community can come for scheduled tours to see the exotic felines and learn about these beautiful animals and the importance of wildlife conservation and environmental issues. And with the smaller animals, we often travel to um, nursing homes and provide um, edutainment uh, for the senior citizens, and they really, really enjoy that. Um, uh, our Peace Fam website is peacefam.org. And um, I think if you go, you can see that we offer so much for the community. I've heard all night tonight about kids in the high schools. This would be a wonderful opportunity. There's no charge to see these exhibits. Um, they could help. They could volunteer with the animals and learn. And I just I think there's been a lot of misinformation, and it would be really a mistake, I believe, to enact an emergency ordinance based on, on false information. And um, thank you for giving me the time to introduce myself and explain. And we also have, I know that um, I didn't mean to cause any concern among my neighbors, but in the event that any um, critical incident happened with the animals, we have a critical incident plan that's already in place. The cages are not near finished being built. There's been rumors about the cages that they're not structurally sound. Um, they will be USDA inspected, federally inspected. I met with the Virginia um, governing officials yesterday, and they said they have no issue with me. They, they will um, email me some additional requirements that they want me to meet. And I have all the federal, state, and uh, I'm hoping local requirements met and exceeded. And um, again, I thank you for taking the time to listen to me. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fenton, could you, could you come forward for a moment? Okay, Mr. Fincham, and, and this is just for my benefit. I don't, I don't know if other board members have questions or not. This is totally new for me. I don't, you know, I, I see a request for an emergency ordinance, and I, I just heard, you know, uh, about cougars and tigers. And normally, that's not uh, something. Those are not animals that are normally in a in a community where they are homes within certain distances and I mean let's just let's just talk about that and the implication or the impact that it could have on the community. I'm not talking about this particular one as a as an isolated incident, but I'm just talking about in general, you know, how does it impact the community? Mr Chairman, what I can say is that I receive some of the same information that the board has uh, and based upon that information I have been asked to look at our zoning ordinance to see whether such a use is permitted under the county's uh, zoning regulations or not. I am not in a position to opine on that at this time as I am still uh, discussing that issue uh, and evaluating our ordinance with respect to that. That is, is separate from, I think, the request before you for the emergency ordinance. But from a zoning perspective, we are looking at the issue to see whether it is a permitted use uh, under our zoning regulations. Okay, so if we were to do an emergency ordinance, that would be for 60 days? Is it? Yes, sir, and you would actually have to uh, adopt your reg the, the full ordinance through the, the formal process within that 60-day period of time. Okay. Uh, uh, it, let's just say we approved this emergency ordinance. What, what would we, what are we granting? What are we giving the homeowner the authority to do? I'm, I mean, as I'm, far as the yeah. animals are, are concerned, it's... I, I'm going to defer to the county attorney on that. I, I think it would address uh, from that specific legislation what they could and could not do. But I'll defer to the county attorney on that. Um, Mr. Taylor, the, the ordinance that we were asked to prepare is based um, in large part on an ordinance from Fairfax County, the effect of which would be to prohibit exotic animals uh, such as these cougars, monkeys, lots of other, lots of other um, animals that are normally found in the wild and not, um, you know, not kept as pets. It contains language that would accept Create, that creates exceptions for traveling animal exhibitions for veterinary um, clinics and purposes and for um, zoological parks if those places are licensed by either the federal or state authorities or both as, as the regulations might require. Um, it, 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 if they're properly licensed then there is an exception for those those types of activities, um, whether or not this this particular lady's property uh, in operation qualifies as a zoological park or not, I don't know. It, do, it doesn't meet the definition that would be in the ordinance for a traveling exhibition, and it's clearly not a veterinary operation. Okay. So and whether or not it meets the zoning for the operation of a, a zoo. Um, or any other type of business. I don't, I don't know. Mr. Fincham was just talking about that, and it appears he hasn't determined. Uh, 
what he thinks about that quite yet. Okay, so then if we if we don't uh, approve the emergency ordinance, what, what does that not not taking any action does what? Not taking any action would not prohibit anyone in the county from keeping those types of animals on their property um, from a pure um, from a from a local ordinance standpoint. In the same way that you might keep a cat or a dog or a, you know, a fish in an aquarium. I mean, it would just be not prohibited. Okay. okay. Other board members have questions. Yeah. Maybe you need from hear from the sheriff or neighbors who started this. Okay. Other. My name is Carol Quiggle. I own the home immediately to the east of. Uh, Mary Feinberg and Sammy Johns. We've been on good relations until last Sunday. I called them in the evening because I was told that they were looking to move in two Bengal tigers, two cougars, and uh, two lynx, and an assortment of other cats. Um, I called Mr. Johns and I asked him if this was true. And at first he told me that no, it wasn't true. It was just a couple of, of mountain lions like the one he had now. I followed it up and asked him again, Bengal tiger, and he finally made, well, just one, but he's a pussycat, nothing to worry about. Um, he told me that, the, this is as of last Sunday, that the plan was that he and Mary were moving to Florida and taking their current cougar, whose name is Czar, to Florida to be placed in a friend's park um, a, a refuge for, for big cats, and that he was leasing the property to a couple who was bringing in the tiger, the cougars, and the other cats, that they were not going to continue living on the property. The house was listed for sale, which came as a surprise to me also. I didn't know the house was up for sale. The house was listed on March the 13th of this year, as of this afternoon, it is still listed online as being for sale. Um, I have never seen any school groups, any other people going to see the uh, cats or monkeys, and it's not much of an exhibit anyways. These are obviously just personal pets. There has never been any conversation or mention of Peace Fam. I think this is an invention that they've just come up with trying to uh, gild the lily. Um, there's concerns about the people that they're looking to lease this property to. I'll leave that to law enforcement to explain. We have been trying to work with the federal and state authorities and they tell us that there's nothing that they can or will do that is up to the Board of Supervisors and our zoning commission to protect us. I can't protect myself against a Bengal tiger. I can't be carrying a high caliber rifle at all times when I'm outside working. I'm outside all the time. We have horses. I have gardens. Um, I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about myself. I'm worried about my animals. This is a clear and present danger. This is completely beyond what is tolerable. I'm asking you for your help to protect us. Thank you. Sheriff, would you uh, In all fairness, I think you should hear from the neighbors first. We'll get in there. And, okay, but and I didn't see anybody else who oh, was. We'll get them up here because, yeah, again, okay. they're the ones that have the first hand. And then I'll bring up Sergeant Heffler. And then uh, we have Matt with us, who is with the Humane Society, the Federal Humane Society. And then I'll recap. Okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Sally Calibro. I'm also a neighbor. I'm on the west side of these folks. Um, just so you all know, uh, <laughs> there's a lot more to this story that's going to come with the Humane Society, but I don't know them very well. They seem like nice folks, but I'm totally against this whole process. I'm scared to death. I've got horses in the nature of 200,000 apiece. We will no longer be able to leave them outside. We fear for ourselves. Um, he's walking the one he's got on a leash in his yard. 
Could he get loose? I ask you. And if you were a neighbor, would you be worried about it? We need your help. Nobody's regulating them now. And now we're talking about getting six more. And what's it going to do to our property values? I pay a lot of taxes. I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars out there. It's going to be worth nothing. We need your help. Sally Calibro. Yes. I'm on the corner of Burst and Signboard. Big farm. Thank you. Hi, good, uh, good evening. My name is Mary McManus. I'm the uh, neighbor directly to the east of Miss Quiggle, so two houses east of uh, uh, the other side of this, I guess, as it were. Um, I actually just found out about this issue this week. I don't know about any of the back and forth and the drama and the numbers about all the animals. Um, I will tell you that I am uh, the mother of two small children. We moved to Caroline County three years ago from uh, suburban New Jersey to give my kids uh, free open space to run and play. And I certainly have uh, a lot of questions and a lot of concerns about the safety in keeping such large animals in a residential area. Um, I don't doubt that they're professionals and they know what they're doing, um, but I definitely didn't uh, move down here to live near a zoo with, you know, not to be ridiculous, but animals that could eat a five and an eight-year-old. Uh, that's a mother speaking, not necessarily practical science, but that's certainly how, uh, as a close neighbor, I feel about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dan Swords. I live right off Burris Road on Doris Lane, just right up the road from where everything's happening. I just found out about this today, so I am concerned. I have grandchildren. Uh, my wife and I just bought the property recently, and I'm concerned about my wife and I. We're outside a lot, and we love the outdoors, and my concern is safety for my, my family, my neighbors. You know, they're Everything that, uh, just like the lady just said, I don't even know all my neighbors yet, but um, I don't want the opportunity of a wild animal to be, have the opportunity to attack anything. And, and I know everyone thinks that, you know, I have friends that have mean dogs. This dog won't bite you, but, you know, might not bite them, but get them around a stranger. So my concern is safety. And, um, you know, and I, I don't know anything that's happened with anybody's personal life, but I am concerned about my family and my neighbors. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm Matthew Gray. I'm the Virginia State Director for the Humane Society of the United States. And I know the reaction is often sort of one of annoyance when the guy who doesn't live in Caroline County shows up to talk. Uh, but the sheriff asked me to be here to give a little bit of background on this issue, which is one that we care a great deal about um, and that we have uh, worked on in a lot of other places all over Virginia. Um, there are two issues that are of primary concern to us at the Humane Society. One is the treatment, the humane treatment of these animals. Uh, the other is the public health and public safety risks that come with having them living in your community. Um, as you know, captive wild animals require an enormous amount of stimulation uh, that often can't be provided when they're kept as pets in enclosures that are smaller than those they would find in a zoo or sanctuary. Um, and uh, just like a dog who is uh, tethered or kenneled, uh, a wild animal kept in a cage uh, without adequate stimulation um, kind of goes crazy over time. Uh, that's something that's sort of been well documented, and I know that the sheriff is going to speak about some specific instances of that. Um, but we've seen it happen in a lot of communities across Virginia. Um, it's perhaps unsurprising to a lot of people that the federal government and the state government, even though they have these licensing procedures and um, supposedly offer some oversight of the ownership of these kinds of animals, really do very little in that regard. Um, and once they've issued a license, we find that there is often very little or no follow-up on that. Uh, and there, then you get into this enormous bureaucratic process of trying to revoke someone's license, uh, which even in instances that seem to be so straightforward and clear 
is apparently very, very difficult to do. And I say that to suggest, Mr. Chairman, that we found that the only way to stop these things from happening or stop these animals from being in your community is for the local government at this level to make a decision that you're not going to permit it. Um, because as I'm sure you found in a lot of other ways, you can't be reliant on Virginia uh, or the federal government to do that for you. It simply won't happen. Um, so, so that brings me to sort of the second and frankly uh, more important issue, which is that there are a lot of instances across Virginia um, where Virginia sheriff's deputies have uh, been put in circumstances of extreme danger uh, caused by exotic pets that have escaped from their enclosures. Um, as you may know, uh, the HSUS, who I represent, has worked for many years alongside Virginia's sheriffs uh, to try and pass a statewide law banning the ownership of exotic pets, uh, and we have not earned the support of the General Assembly to do that. Um, only a statewide ban is going to prevent this sort of cat and mouse chase where these animals are moved from locality to locality. Um, but in the meantime, it's important that Caroline have an ordinance to prevent it here. Um, the situation that's unfolding here and what's been sort of alluded to in some of the previous comments, um, I, I can only speak to what I've heard, uh, which is that there are these pets that are potentially going to be moved here to Caroline County. Some of them have been owned by an individual who is currently under investigation by both the USDA and the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries uh, for some of the worst instances of animal welfare violations I have ever seen. Um, and so, again, it, it just sort of gives you pause and concern uh, that uh, someone may potentially uh, move animals elsewhere in order to get out from underneath a great deal of scrutiny that's taking place across the state right now. Um, and it struck me, Mr. Chairman, in closing that I often hear a lot of the same arguments in uh, meetings like this, and it's not necessarily to denigrate any of them, uh, but you often hear how much people love these wild animals as their pets, and I believe they probably do. Uh, and perhaps their heart is in the right place. Um, and, and you hear claims that they're adequately cared for and that they don't pose a health or public safety risk, and often that, that's just not true. Um, you often hear about a nonprofit organization or, or the educational purposes behind ownership of these exotic animals. Um, and I, so I only suggest that to say I don't know too much about the specifics here, but I've heard those arguments before. It's not an uncommon thing. Um, so again, we urge your support of this emergency ordinance. Perhaps, Mr. Chairman, it's something that begins a conversation in this community that will continue in the coming months. I know this is rather short notice for you all as it was for us, um, but it's a necessary, important conversation to have uh, and to get a lot of community input on. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, I thought I would let Mr. let the sheriff go, and then once we start, then we could just go ahead and ask our questions. We'd get all the information first, and then we could ask questions. But you will get a chance to do it. Let's just start. Okay. Sheriff, if you could come, and then once he does, we can then, you know, let the board ask questions. Okay. How I got involved, of course, was Mr. Underwood had called me and asked me about uh, some of the concerns that he's received phone calls on, and in doing so, uh, Sergeant Heffler went down there to investigate for us, and I'm going to let her speak and then recap again. Okay. okay? Right. Two weeks ago, the phone uh, started ringing with concern calls. Yeah, yeah. if you can move a little closer. Thank you. Better now? Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, when we started receiving phone calls about the uh, situation that was unfolding, I had the occasion to visit Ms. Feinberg's residence, and I witnessed the enclosures that they are starting to build, um, spoke with Sammy in reference to what was going on, um, and he indicated that there were more animals that were coming in. My concern, because I, we're the agency that is going to have to enforce the animal welfare laws and the public safety issue involved in this, um, with adding the six more animals, six more exotic animals to the property. Um, they have come by. They, uh, Sammy and Ms. Feinberg identified themselves over a year ago with the animals that they have, the cougar and their monkeys. Um, they, they have a proper enclosure. My concern where, with what they have right now is that Ms., uh, Sammy does keep his cougars are in his house, and they don't have uh, 
perimeter, perimeter fence to prevent escape when he's taking the cat from his enclosure to the house, which I believe that is a requirement under USDA, and I have discussed that with um, people in that department. But um, I, we emailed you all of the information that I got from the different other different agencies, and that's also something to consider. Thank you. First and foremost, I, I don't, I'm not going to try to address this particular situation because I haven't talked with their party or everyone that's involved. Uh, just the fact that we don't have anything to regulate these exotic, wild, dangerous animals is my concern as your chief law enforcement officer. And when I look back even many, many years ago when people talk about, you know, uh, we have pets and, you know, everyone's been to the zoo and you see the monkeys, and the monkeys are cute little animals and they won't bother you. I can remember back in Henrico PD, we responded to a call where the owner could not control that monkey, and that monkey got out. And I've seen that monkey tear a police officer up a little bit. As a matter of fact, the police officers, and I was in training, so I'm at awe. They told me, stay in the car, which I was glad to stay in the car, because I was on training. They, I wasn't certified at the time, but I observed it all. And they shot this monkey, and the bullets actually went through the monkey. We thought we missed it, but did not. And that was many years ago. And then recently here, I think Hanover had a situation where a couple of uh, chimpanzees, I think, got out. And again, the havoc that it does for public safety. And, and you know, what I did hear Ms. Feinberg say is that they were trying to do all these things that, from her meeting, and there's a list of that, and I think that letter is included in your packet, as I just got it today, for what she wants to confine and what she wants to do, and they're saying, your permit's not going to be allowed until all this is done. Well, this is before all this is done is what I'm trying to point out when we're dealing with it. And that's why I've asked for the emergency order to come in for our public safety. Most recently, the sheriff in Zanesville, Ohio, stated that they had a zookeeper that had all these exotic animals. To make a long story short, he decided to release all those animals and then he committed suicide. You remember that? Just to recap it, 49 animals, and again, PETA has even sent us information that we had forwarded to you with even some videos of an undercover operation that's on there. Please take, a, take some time to look at that, even the fact that if we do go through this emergency order, uh, then we can follow up. But 49 are slaughtered, 18 of them are tigers, one of which is over 300 pounds, 17 lions, six black bears, uh, two grizzlies, let's see, three um, other type lions that I think were in there, and um, also a baboon, and there was two others, uh, two wolves. So again, where does it go from there, and where does it go from where we were there to what could possibly happen in Caroline? And as, you, again, I'm going to recap to say, I think this emergency order is necessary. I think it's something that we should do and go one step at a time from that. Uh, when I did talk with uh, Jim Hug Husband, who is with the, uh, the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, they're only a licensing agency. They don't do what, we, what I feel that we need to do to protect our people. Mr. Underwood, they don't live too far from you, I don't think. So uh, again, the concerns are more so for us. Okay. Mr. Underwood, I believe you had a question, and then I think Mr. Thomas had a question. Well, actually, I just have a question for Mr. Matt. Gray. You're, you know, I don't think your mic is on. I'm sorry. I just had a question for Mr. Gray. Um, you mentioned, um, in terms of the state and federal regulate, there, there basically are none um, that can undergird what, you, what you're trying to do in terms of the humane society. Is that correct? There are these. Um, um, Mr. Underwood, these um, licensing requirements, and the sheriff just referred to it, whereby you can mm -hmm. obtain a license from the USDA and one from the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. Our concern is that that seems to be the end of the road. You know, if, if your desire is to not have these animals in Caroline, the only thing you can do, the best thing you can do is to pass an ordinance saying mm -hmm. it, it can't be so. Uh, because, again, if you're going to rely on these federal or state agencies to follow up on the licenses they've issued, uh, to do the inspections they say they're going to do, 
uh, and then to potentially enforce, um, uh, you know, through legal recourse, violations of it, it just doesn't seem to happen. Right. Uh, okay. And we've seen that happen in other parts of Virginia here, too. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't know. Before you do, again, as you've just heard here, if they had animals and if they got free, who do you think is going to get them? The feds aren't coming down to help us. The state's not going to help us. It's our animal control and our deputies. Can I just a couple more questions? Sure, go ahead. Can I just go ahead? Miss, uh, no, I just want to talk to you. I'm, thank you, up, Mr. Gray. Miss Feinberg, can you come to the mic, please? Miss Feinberg, how many years have you been working with, the, with these animals? Uh, I'm, well, with Czar, about two years. About the two monkeys. years. And you say that you do hold a full-time job in Springfield? Yes, I do. So I guess what are these animals doing while you're working? Um, Sammy takes care of the, the cougar and the monkeys. Sammy doesn't work? I He's guess. retired. He's retired. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, we were hoping that these other two zookeepers would come and help with the animals and take care of them, take care of the property with us. And, and they have over 20 years of experience. And um, I don't think it's fair for all exotic animal owners to be punished for what the man in Zanesville did. That's and, and I can appreciate what you're saying, but I'm, I'm just going to tell you that looking at law, sometimes the, the rights of one have to be abated so that the rights of many can be protected. And I think in this case, you, you, may be, you may be the one who's, you know, I have, if you were out on an island and you wanted to dance with monkeys and bears, I wouldn't care, but the, the fact that we have an obligation to protect, and I just live a few miles away from you, by the way. You're in my district, so um, I do have concerns. I can remember years ago when just a wild black bear came down from the mountains over in Caroline Pines, and it was just unbelievable, and everybody was in an uproar, and I would just hate to think that I would even consider putting a community in that situation. I understand, I feel for you, but I, I do have some grave concerns and um, you, you're gonna have to really dance with me right now. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Yes, uh, Ms. Feinberg, if you would stay for a second, please. Sure. Uh, I just went, when you were discussing your website and things, I, I went and to peacefam.org and I was looking at it and there are two monkeys I don't know what gender or style or whatever but there's a, a very small czar mountain lion looks like a regular size cat well that was when he was a baby I was gonna say just below that is a picture of you and I take it Sammy um, that was me about 80 pounds thinner <laughs> I trust that I have nothing to do with that, but it it seems like that's an old picture of you two. And I was wondering if it was an old picture of the cat. Yes. So the cat is now no longer the size of a house cat. It's yeah. how big? I would say about 120 pounds. So that's like a pretty good sized dog. He, yeah, he's, he's one and a half. And at one and a half, he's not full grown. Okay, he'll be full grown at what age? Probably about two, two and a half. About two? Okay, so get a lot bigger? About four. About four? I okay. don't, I don't believe, I believe it's more like two. Oh, no. Oh, the sheriff's That's good. okay, ma'am. We, we're okay. The sheriff's, uh, all right, uh, I'm sorry. Um, just to make sure, that the last thing, the sheriff just gave us photographs, I guess, for the board of your current enclosure, and that's not the little pussycat that's on the <laughs> website. Um, do you have a perimeter fence at all? Yes, 
Yes, we do. Around your property? No, not a, around the property. Okay. That's you, that was in the plans. Um, that.